Our bodies are made up of many parts. For example, the body has legs, which we use for running and skiing, and arms and hands, which we use for working and playing. And the head has eyes, a nose, and ears for sensing our surroundings. Plants, too, have different parts. In many cases, we eat different parts of plants. When we eat onions, we're eating a part of the plant that grows underground. When we eat an apple, we're eating another part of the plant. Cabbage is yet another part of a plant. Plant parts carry out different jobs, which are very important to the survival of a plant. During the next few minutes, we're going to explore many of the different plant parts and take a look at the important jobs they carry out. Think about some of the things you did this morning. First of all, you woke up in a place you call home. Chances are you then had something to drink and you probably had something to eat as well. And without realizing it, you were continually breathing. Plants carry out similar activities, but in different ways. For example, all plants need a place to live, and they need water, and they need energy or food to help them grow and reproduce. So, as you can see, plants, like humans, have basic needs which must be met in order to survive. And like humans, the body parts of plants play a big role in helping them survive. Almost all plants have leaves, which are responsible for making food for the plant. Most plants also contain roots, which absorb water. And plants also have stems, which carry important materials between the roots and the leaves. All plants, with a few exceptions, contain leaves, roots, and stems. Let's take a closer look at these plant parts. A look at this plant does not reveal roots below the surface of the ground. You decide. What edible root is below the surface? This edible root is a radish. We commonly eat other roots as well, including beets. Why are roots important? Roots perform several very important jobs. First, they hold the plant in place. Without roots, plants such as large trees would not be securely fastened to the ground. In many cases, the underground root of a plant is just as long as the part of the plant found above ground. In some cases, roots store food, which the plant uses later. Roots act like sponges, absorbing water and other important minerals from the soil. Next time you go into a garden, try seeing how hard it is to pull up a big weed. Most weeds have a single thick root, called a taproot. A taproot is one of two main root types. Compare the roots of grass to a taproot. As you can see, roots of the grass are much more stringy and don't have a taproot. Grasses tend to have fibrous roots, which spread out over a wide area in the soil. Both taproots and fibrous roots contain root hairs. Thousands of root hairs play a big role in absorbing water and minerals. The tree trunk of this giant sequoia is immense. Tree trunks are actually big plant stems. A plant stem grows above the ground, extending from the roots. What's the job of a plant stem? One of the biggest jobs of plant stems is to support and hold up leaves. The main stem of this tree supports many branches, which support hundreds of leaves. And these plant stems hold up flowers. 
Plant stems also carry water, minerals, and nutrients between the roots and leaves. In some cases, the stems of some plants store food for the plant to use later, and some plants store water in their stems to use during dry periods. You decide. What's the difference between these plant stems? As you can see, this stem is soft, green, and fleshy. And this stem is brown, hard, and woody. Flowers, ferns, and grasses have soft stems. Shrubs and trees, on the other hand, have woody stems. Hardly a day goes by without you using something made from a tree's woody stem. The view of these trees in mid-October is much different from the view of trees in the month of June. What accounts for this difference? The answer lies in the color of the leaves on the trees. Here in New England, leaves turn brilliant colors in autumn, changing from their usual green color in spring and summer. What are leaves, and why are they important? Leaves come in many shapes and sizes. Some leaves have a general round shape, and other leaves are thin and pointed. Some plants, such as pine trees, have needles instead of leaves, and many cactuses have sharp spines. We eat leaves, including lettuce leaves, cabbage leaves, and spinach leaves. In some warmer parts of the world, leaves stay on trees year-round. But in colder climates, many types of trees drop their leaves in late autumn and are leafless throughout the winter. You decide. Why are leaves so important to plants? Leaves are extremely important because they're the main food-making factories of plants. Through a process called photosynthesis, plants are able to make food from the sun's energy, along with water and a gas called carbon dioxide. In turn, a gas called oxygen is produced as well as sugars, which the plants use for food. Leaves capture the sun's energy. The more leaves a plant has, the more energy it can potentially capture. While not all plants have green leaves, the vast majority of them are green. Why? The process of photosynthesis occurs within structures called chloroplasts, which are located inside plant cells. Chloroplasts contain a green product called chlorophyll, which plays a vital role in trapping the sun's energy. Chlorophyll causes the dominant green color seen during the plant's growing season. But when the growing season winds down, green chlorophyll becomes less visible and other colors in plant cells emerge. Every minute of every day, you're breathing air into your lungs. You're also breathing gases out of your body. Plants also expel water vapor. Transpiration is the process of plants giving off water vapor. Water vapor, along with other gases, such as oxygen, are given off by plants. Gases and water vapor pass in and out of small holes in the leaf called stomata. Stomata may be opened and closed to control the amount of water in a plant. During the past few minutes, we've taken a look at some of the needs of plants and explored how the parts of plants help them meet their needs. We discussed how roots anchor a plant and provide it with needed water and nutrients. We saw how stems support the leaves, provide a pathway to transport materials between the roots and leaves, and even store food and water. 
and we investigated the role leaves play in the important process of photosynthesis and transpiration. So, the next time you eat some lettuce, pull up a weed, or take a walk in a forest, think about some of the things we've discussed during the past few minutes. You might just look at plants a little differently. Fill in the correct word to complete the sentence. Good luck, and let's get started. Number one, hold a plant in place. Number two, grasses tend to have roots. Number three, carry water between the roots and leaves. Number four, is carried out in the leaves. And number five, is the process of plants giving off water vapor.